Making your own cyber assets like this is actually easier than you imagined. Here's how you can make them in Illustrator. Okay, we're in Illustrator now and I wanted to first go over the grid that I showed you at the start of the video. This one's super easy and I like to use it in my projects quite a lot. It kind of has a barcode kind of feel to it. So let's get straight into this. First, you're gonna wanna select this rectangle tool and you're just gonna want to make a strip right here. Once you have this rectangle put onto your canvas, what you want to do is go to the top here where it says object. You're gonna click down there, scroll all the way down to path. And right here, as you can see, it says split into grid. All right, so now you've got this little text box that just opened. I like to click preview so I can actually see what I'm doing in front of me. But what I like to do is I press shift and then up on my arrow keys to get 10. It might be different depending on what your canvas size is, but I like to do 10 rows. And then for the columns, I'm gonna do that same thing, hold shift and then up on my arrow key until I get somewhat close to squares. So it looks like 40 columns to 10 rows gives me a very square grid. So I'm just gonna click okay on that. As you can see, this shape has been split into loads of little squares. So each of these are their individual path. What you can do is you can click on them all individually. But what I'm going to do is select all of it and go over to this shape builder tool right here. You can also use shift M to get to it. So now what I'm going to do is going to be a bit weird. I'm literally just going to start clicking random places on here while holding alt. So let's just do this. And basically you're getting the main outline of what you want the grid to look like. So you do this as, as much as you want to, as little as you want to is really up to you and your project. I like to just absolutely go ham and spam this like crazy. And then what I like to do is look at it and I try and make sure that it's not too uniform. I want it to be kind of random, which is why I was clicking that so sporadically with my mouse. So here, like I, I don't like that there's so many straight lines here. So I'm just gonna go in here and like get rid of some of these maybe maybe take a few more squares out but this is really up to you how you want to do it you just gotta look at it and kind of just be like oh well, okay that kind of looks like a barcode now so as you can see i've now got all of these little squares and i'm just gonna hover over them all and then press ctrl g to group them now i've got that what i like to do is make like an extra variation so i'll hold alt and drag it down here and then i like to resize it to around about half maybe maybe a third and I will hold alt again and basically drag it to the side so it continues on. I'm going to zoom in, make sure that it's like actually connected and there's not some weird and dark space in the middle. And then I'm going to do that again here. Pick them all up and control G to group them. So now what I've got is I've got two variations. I've got a longer one if I wanted to use that on a label or something, but I've also got a shorter one that I could use maybe in the background for like some cool abstract view. Okay, so now we've done the grid, I wanted to move on to the next thing. There was a few different variations of stars that I showed you at the start of the video, and it's super easy to do that too. So you wanna to go to this side and get the ellipse tool, and you're just going to make a circle on your screen, just like that. So now what you're going to want to do is go to the top, click effect, distort and transform, pucker and bloat. Again, make sure that preview is checked on here because you want to see like how it's changing the circle. And you're just going to drag this closer to the pucker. And as you can see, that instantly just makes a one of those Y2K stars. So now you've got this. What I like to do is expand it. So expand appearance, you can do that just by going up to object and then expand appearance right here. So now it's all one solid object. What I like to do is make a copy of that and then make another copy of that, but this time I wanna paste it in place. So I do control C and then control shift V. So that basically copies in place. And now I wanna rotate it a little bit, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And we have this new variation of a star right here. I'm just going to group that together right now. So what can you, else can you do with this? As you saw at the start, what I had was like a little bit of a longer star. So what you can do with that is make some rectangles that are going to be the axis for your star. 
And I'm going to do that same thing. Control C, Control Shift V to paste it in place. And now I have a little cross here like this. Okay. So now we're going to take that star we made earlier with the, with the ellipse tool. And we're just going to drag it over and apply it right here. We're going to make sure that it's right in the center. To do that, I'm just, I'm selecting the back crosshair and I'm going to group that. And then I'm also going, I'm going to select all of it and then align it too. As you can see, I've got this one, which is a little bit of a different variation of this, but you, the thing with this one is you can do a lot more to it. So now I've got this, I'm going to make a copy of it. And what I can now do is just grab the top. I can grab the top and just in, like increase the height of it. I can do the same thing at the bottom here. I just need to make sure that I'm grabbing onto the actual anchor points. And now we have a nice long star. So with that, you can do as much as you want with that. You can uh, make you can make it fit for any project that you're doing. So we can do the same thing that we did with the other star with these. I think this one would work better because of the size of like the outwards paths. So you just can do the same thing. Control C, Control Shift V, and then you're going to turn it a little bit and then shrink it down a little bit. So now you've got another variation of star right there. So these are pretty much the only stars that I ever use in my designs. Uh, sometimes they can be really nice like supporting assets for things like on labels or just below like small little text underneath titles or whatever you're working on. But I'm sure you guys can figure out some cool way of using those in your projects. Okay, so for the final thing I'm going to show you today in this video, I wanted to show you how to do those cool radial stars, shapes, really whatever you want to make them and they're super easy and I actually really enjoy making them because you can always make something new every time you try it it's really hard to replicate the exact same thing so what I'm going to do is go over here and I'm going to select the pencil tool and now what I do is as easy as this you just draw a random shape I like to keep it with sharp corners and then you're going to make sure that the fill uh, it's been filled in so it's an actual shape and seriously it's this easy you click object repeat radial and you can now go in and whatever everything's symmetrical and you can go in and make all these cool little shapes with just that pencil tool so like there we go we've made one of them I want to do something maybe a little bit sharper it's not as flowy so what we're going to do is just do some sharp lines maybe like a lightning bolt type thing obviously it's not going to be perfect because we're done with the pencil tool not the pen tool you make sure that it's a shape that's been filled in and all you do is go up to object repeat radial and now you can see that this has created another very interesting shape and you can pull these any way you want and it's going to be symmetrical so some of these shapes could look kind of cool i kind of like the way that looks Maybe if I can get something more like that, that kind of is interesting. As I said earlier, these are really hard to replicate. Like these shapes, you could do anything with a pen stroke, honestly. And I think you would come up with some cool designs. So let me just do something even more crazy than those two shapes. We're going to do like this sort of tribal shape. So we're not, I'm not sure how this one's going to turn out, but we're about to see together. So we go to object, repeat, radial. And I already like that. But what you can do, which I found is great with these, is you can make variations of the same shape. So all I have to do is hold alt. And now I've got two of them. But now with this one, I can just double click to go into this layer. And I can mess around with it more. Like that looks really cool as well. So now we have another shape from that shape that we drew at the start. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to drag down, go into the shape. Maybe I'm going to turn it this time. See if I get something cool. Turn it, mess around with it. I do kind of like the way that looks, but maybe we'll like that one a lot more. It's all trial and error. You can all mess around with it. But with these, I'm going to do one more right here. You can change the amount 
of the shapes that you want repeated. You could do a load like that. Or you could do just a few. Maybe you want just to keep like six in there. Keep it simple. Realistically, you can do whatever you want with this. But I wanted to show you guys how to do that because I use it all the time in my designs. If I need a small little shape, instead of like going and downloading some pack or looking through all of my design assets, I just hop into Illustrator and just try something out. You never know what's going to happen. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just really wanted to show you guys how I make some of my cyber assets for some of my futuristic posters I've done and some of my futuristic cover arts I've done. I, I really love these uh, tips and I use them all the time and I thought that you guys might learn something from them. So if you guys are going to be making some of these, make sure to let me know down in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. And yeah, you guys have a good one. Peace.